Hey, War of Division fans. Welcome back to another episode of War of Division. Today is Wednesday, so what that usually means is Happy Wednesday. But when I woke up this morning and I looked up what's coming up this week, I realized maybe we're no longer trending in that direction. With the one year anniversary long gone, it seems like the game is getting less less generous. And I'm not sure if this is a good thing or this is a bad thing, or maybe this is just one of those things where they're setting us up to have something really, really big coming up later on in the game. So let's go ahead and talk about all the different changes. And by the way, even though I thought this was going to be a slow week, there definitely seems to be a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and begin in Spring 2021 Shop Part 2. As you can see, I've already grabbed my free things of the day, and that's the event skip tickets. These are always great because sometimes when you're just kind of rushing to do things or perhaps getting your dailies done, using the skip tickets is definitely the way to go. But as I scour through the shop, I realize there isn't really anything worthy of noting. Other than the fact that they're giving a Sasuke Katana plus 5, in a ice lands plus five for 3,000 visitors, nothing really came to really make me, I guess, pop. And the rest of the stuff is pretty much the same every single day or every single week. Now, one thing I feel like the game has missed out is the fact that they should be perhaps giving us some spring medals. Now, I know some people might say, well, are you saying you should get it because you're entitled? No, I don't think so because in the past, every player got to enjoy something like 14 free medals i think that this is week two of the release of the spring medals and free-to-play players have not gotten any at all and it makes me think why are they doing this because if you're going to release a medal why not give it to everyone why are you trying to really essentially making this into a premium type of medal and hopefully maybe next week they will give us free medals and that's me crossing my fingers not much else to look at to this shop other than the fact that the feature shop includes Tetrasilphid, which is getting the three star treatment for the Esper. And of course, Ifrit has already received the three star Esper treatment when it was first released in terms of EX jobbing. Now, today is going to be water day, so don't forget to pick up whatever shards you may need. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the banners because it did also kind of make me think a little bit because. The only thing now free to play players, technically speaking, have access to getting the spring medals is to summon this step up once a day, 10x summons, three step program. And each step you will get 10 medals. And that seems okay. But the drop rate on these things are not the best. First off, you only get 10 shards for 2000 visitors on step two, and you get 25 shards on step three. And you essentially don't get a whole lot on step one. So for 6,000 visitors and you're only getting 30 spring medals, it is nothing to even think about. The only other thing we're doing is celebrating 400th day. And this is essentially what we got. Four URs guaranteed. The good news is you get to re-roll it four times or up to four times. Again, it's pay gems and you get 100 medals. And the theme continues, 2,000 pay gems, 100 medals and so forth and so forth the only thing that free-to-play players get to enjoy here is they get five URs guaranteed for 2000 which is a pretty good deal here obviously but i think the best deal is go for the five ur vision cards guaranteed because here players are able to enjoy perhaps getting a vision card they're really hoping to get and for 2000 free visitors that's not bad at all the other option is of course if you already got a good amount of vision cards and you're trying to really finish them off, this is also a good opportunity for free to play players to get 25 vision cards guaranteed in each slot. Therefore, you're going to get 250 UR vision card shards. And other than that, that's about it. If you take a look at the equipment training quests, they're bundling them up now. You got the healing maze, the Ross, and the Sasuke Katana. So before the Sasuke Katana and the Ross of Gothi was released. As you can see, they released Brutal Difficulty, which these, by the way, are brand new quests because I haven't even touched these myself. Healing Maze was the only one that released prior to all this. And I didn't actually get all the mission. And interestingly enough, with some of my newer units that I've obtained over the course of the last few months, 
I was able to destroy this essentially. Before this week's update, I was only able to do annihilate all your enemy units and do do not hire companions. For some reason, I kept losing, so I got no KO units. I didn't get that actually. What am I saying? And then, of course, I couldn't avoid the fact that I was taking more than five thousand damage. And the reason this map is so difficult is because there's four archers on the top of the hill. And if you don't have, say, two arithmeticians to try to kill those off right away, they're going to do a lot of damage to your team. So that's definitely my take home is make sure you try to have some arithmeticians on your team. Defeating the three bandits is actually quite easy, but for some weird reason, I couldn't do it before. So now that I got it all done, it kind of, you know, do another check off on my box list. And the Sasuke Katana, as you can see the mission board, they're also wanting you to only use the lightning units. Again, something that they're really trying to push, trying to get the players to really hone in on building units of the same element. And as you can see, this is actually not too shabby. You got to defeat some units, get a chain, which isn't too bad since a lot of the units nowadays have a skills or limit break that can do essentially chaining of three. And then let's take a look at Raza Galdi as well. Same thing, you can do water units and you get some bonus materials and everything else essentially is the same with the exception of you don't have to kill three units at the same time. So I think these are very good additions to the game because as players are progressing through the game, they're gonna get stronger and with the release of EX and of course all the new units that are being released post EX implementation, they're all getting that treatment, so therefore you should have a lot more stronger units to essentially deal with some of these hard, I guess you could say, difficult stuff. You know, the game likes to call them brutal difficulty. And, and sometimes the brutal difficulties vary in terms of difficulty, right? I've had problems with some brutal difficulties and others, it seems like a cakewalk. So they're definitely, and in my opinion, probably needs to be a little bit more fluidity in terms of design because it for me it doesn't make sense that a lot of these quests are much easier than others even though they're all labeled brutal difficulty so with the new implementation of the new brutal quests for ras al gathi and sasuke katana they also gave us some extra bonus items if you beat the quests if you did the normal mode you're going to get some nice bonus items and then if you did the brutal mode you can actually get a little bit help in terms of free viziors and looks like you get a rainbow rainbow spear and of course a rainbow fragment of thought these are all really nice touches in my honest opinion and the thing is you don't actually have to concentrate on specifics as long as you defeat any of the brutal difficulty 10 times you will get these nice rewards so i actually skipped this just a moment ago but the four vizior shop in celebration of 400 day of release of global version of War of Divisions, they're giving us an opportunity to buy some really nice stuff for four pay gems. And I know on Monday I talked about the packs and seeing some of the value in those packs. Perhaps if you are a non spender, you may actually contemplate maybe spending a whole dollar here today, actually, because with a dollar you can actually purchase 60 pay gems. And 60 pay jams will get you all of this, right? Because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 4 times 7 is 28. So therefore, it's not even a dollar's worth. And I'm telling you, this is probably one of the best values you're going to get for a very long time. I think they did the one pay viziors during the one year anniversary. To celebrate one year anniversary, right? That's pretty clever. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. This one I think is all already worth it. Because by spending one dollar or ninety nine cents, if you will, you will get three large energy restore potions plus sixty pay visuals. If you spend four of those pay visuals, you get all of this: arena skip tickets, thirty energy restores, and one hundred energy cubes or one hundred experience cubes. Excuse me. Here you will get one rainbow broadstone, which I think is definitely worth four pay visuals. You will get three fragments of thought and 10 vision vision spheres plus more experience it looks like they really want to give us experience cubes if you want to get some rainbow awakening source stones for your espers this is also a good one this one i think is actually not too bad because right now there's not many ways to get 
green nameless. In fact, I don't think there isn't any way in the game in terms of farming. But all these other ones, you can actually, quote unquote, technically speaking, farm it because as you're gathering more shards of units that overflows into the so metal shop, you can actually exchange them from blue all the way up to the yellow. You can actually exchange it for the pink one or the red one as well. But I think you're much better off farming those individually because you're going to need the tablets as well. This one is also really, really good. I think this one is actually really, really good. It's, you get 300 fragment of thought of your choice and 300 awakening presence. Now, in my honest opinion, this is some of the hardest things behind a wall for beginning players because as players are starting the game, they're going to really run into the issue of trying to build too many units. And that's going to be limited based off these thoughts and prisms. And then last but not least, vision card. You get 200 growth eggs, but 400 orbs of envisionment. And I think 400 orbs of envisionment is actually really, really good because essentially what this is is 10 rainbow fragments, or excuse me, 10 rainbow spheres, because you should be ideally using the orbs of envisionment only for your vision cards because the other ones, they're much, much easier to obtain because rainbow spears are by far one of the harder things to obtain in the game. So overall, I think spending $1 in supporting of the game to celebrate 400 days, is not too shabby. But if you're adamantly against spending for this game, I appreciate and of course respect that as well. But if you are planning on spending, this is going to be essentially your number one step. Buy the 99 cent pack and go ahead and pick all of these up because this will definitely boost up your account quite a bit. All right, I think that's all the time for this video. Surprisingly enough, there isn't a lot of things for free to play players. And that is a shame because I think after one year anniversary, the game, in my honest opinion, should cater more to the multi massive player base of any mobile games. And generally speaking, they're gonna be the free to play players. If you wanna keep the population rolling, you wanna keep the population high, you wanna keep the community happy, you should always give perhaps more free items than simply offering a lot of paid banners. Even though the paid players or the heavy spenders or any spenders are always gonna spend because you're not really more or less attracting them to spend more because they're gonna spend regardless. But I think in this case, it also makes sense to get more banners to attract them because most likely a lot of players are gonna kinda of, you know, close their wallet for a bit because of the fact that they're probably waiting on Final Fantasy VII Remake collaboration. And just bear in mind, in the next couple of months, we're going to be dealing with multiple 100 cost units. And I think that's something that I decided I'm probably going to make that into the Friday free thinking episode this week. And that is, well, it's going to be legitimate enough for free play players to even concentrate on building one premium unit. So I can't wait for that episode. Until next time, take care of yourself and all your loved ones. And always thank you for spending your most valuable resource with me and my channel. Take care.